the sun rose on the small town. Creatures of the night fled and burned at the merciless glare of the sun. Man, I wish I could have gotten into some of that action. Mike thought to himself. The girl, still fast asleep, tossed and turned in the doctor's bed. Who's the babe? Said a voice from behind. Gah! What the heck, Lucas? When did you get here? Just now. You finally get yourself a girlfriend? Very funny. Me and Frank found her collapsed on the ground yesterday. So we took her in for her to heal. She's quite the smoke show, isn't she? Lucas said, staring at her sleeping form. Get out. Oh, come on, Michael. Get. Out. Not saying a word, Lucas left the room. It's a wonder how those two are related, Michael said, putting a hand to his forehead in disgust. Mike turned to look at the bed in which the girl laid, to find her sitting upright and staring directly at him. When did you wake up? I'd say right about when you yelled. Oh yeah, sorry about that. One of the nosy ones in town came in here and jump scared me. He sounded like one all right. How do you feel? Rested. That's good to hear. Were you here all night? Pretty much. I stayed over here, though, don't worry. Mike said, chuckling. Why? One motto I live by is no man, well, in this case, woman, gets left behind. The girl looked down to the floor for a few moments, then said, Destiny. I excuse me? You asked me yesterday what my name was. It's Destiny. Oh. Well, pleasure to meet you, Destiny. My name is Michael, but most folks just call me Mike. The two looked at each other for a while. Destiny would break the silence by saying, Did you get hurt yesterday too? What happened to your shoulder? She asked, looking at the mark on top of Mike's left shoulder. Huh? Oh no, I'm fine. That's just a scar. He said, pointing to it. What happened? She asked with concern. Long story short, I found one too many elite zombies than I could handle all at once. And one of them got a good blow on my shoulder. Lost feeling in that entire arm for weeks. It was basically a noodle on my body. Obviously, as you can see. I'm all good now. He explained as he twisted and turned the arm. Yes, thanks to my efforts. Said another voice from behind. Gah! What the? What is with you people and sneaking up behind me today? Destiny let out a small giggle. So sorry, but I think I'm allowed to enter my own residence without knocking. Mike let out a small growl. So, while I ignore Michael's childish complaining, let me ask you, did you sleep well, miss? Yeah, I guess. Soon as we got back, she was out like a light. And soon, I'll be out of here faster than a light. Destiny said with determination. Why's that? You have somewhere you need to go? The girl paused, looking down to th at the floor again, but this time in thought. Did she really have anywhere to go? She never really gave that question any thought. She was always on the run. Not really, she said. Don't you have a family? No. A long silence followed this statement. The doctor had nothing to say. Michael had too much to say. He didn't know which response to say. Looks like we have something else in common, Mike said, breaking the silence. The two of them are now both looking down at the floor, or anywhere else but at each other. The doctor slowly slips out of the door, muttering something about needing more herbs. I might have my friends, who are almost like my family, but I never really knew my legitimate family. Mike said, looking at the ceiling. I guess we do have a thing in common. Destiny trails off. Suddenly she stands, causing Mike's attention to come down from the ceiling. But one thing we don't have in common is that I'm not staying here. Destiny says and starts toward the door only for Mike to stand in front of it once again. Step out of my way. I'm better and rested. Now move. Where are you going to go? You have no supplies, no weapons. You'll die the first night you're out there. There aren't many towns out there that'll help you, let alone exist. I might have just met you, but if I can keep you from going out there and dying, then I'm doing it. Then come with me. If you don't want me dead, then protect me from more than just a wooden door. I can't do that, Mike says. And why is that? You said it yourself. You have friends, but you have no family here. Nothing is holding you back but yourself. Destiny shouts. The room falls silent. Look, Mike, I'm sorry. Destiny starts, 
but Mike puts his hand up. Don't. You're right. I'm what? Destiny steps back in shock. You're right. I have no real family here. But they've treated me like family. So I'm not just going to uproot myself from their lives and walk away from everything they've done for me. You say you can read my eyes, and I can read yours too. You've been alone, haven't you? No one out there who cares about you. Well, now you've found a place where people do. Mike says. You don't even know me. No, but I can't in good conscience allow you to get hurt. You're not my father. Michael's eyes widen at the mention of that word. His eyes, unblinking, shoot down to the ground. What's happening to him? Destiny asks, concerned. Looking up, his eyes meet hers. But he's just staring into space. Jaws dropped as low as they can possibly go. Rushing into the scene, Isabella shakes Michael's shoulder and says, Michael, snap out of it! It wasn't your fault! Michael snaps out of the trance, eyes blinking a million times a second to make up for the loss of blinking earlier. Putting his jaws back into place, he says, You know what? Fine. Just leave us behind. The ones who actually cared about you. Go on! Have fun in that empty world that the legacy holders are slowly ripping apart. Void of emotion, Michael turns and walks away from the scene, his face unmoving as he slowly walks out of town to his home. The scene fell silent again, with destiny filled with confusion and guilt, Isabella watching as he slowly walks up the hill, then turning to face destiny, red hot with anger. What just happened? Isabella let out a growl and said, understood the magnitude of the mental anguish you just reminded him of. What? All he wanted to do was help you. Isabella took one last glare at Destiny, then turned and ran in the direction Mike had left from. Destiny stood alone to dwell on what had just happened. Isabella would walk into Michael and Clyde's house to find Michael banging away at his anvil, repairing his iron chest plate. The clangs of metal could be heard before she even walked in. His eyes fixed on the task at hand, but the clangs he put forth were fueled by rage. It wasn't your fault at all, Isabella said as he clanged away. Michael ceased his repetitive motions, took a long breath, and said, You weren't there. You don't know. But I know what went down. You can't even begin to understand! If I hadn't have taken him with me, he'd still be with us now! He wanted to go with you. He wanted to do everything with you. I could have told him to stay behind. I could have had him stay safe until the morning. I could have saved him. But instead, I got him killed. Michael would say as his bloodshot eyes would begin to water. Mike. Just go. I need some time for myself. But... Please, just go. She wanted to comfort him so bad, but she just did as he wished and left him behind. It was as he said he wanted, but he really did want to be comforted. However, in his eyes, it isn't the warrior way to show weakness. The moon rose over the darkened world. A figure, dressed in black, enters a hidden castle. The figure walks through the halls and into a small room, where a middle-aged man was waiting. Have you located him? The man asked. The hooded figure kneeled on their knees and said, Yes, master. The figure removed its hood to reveal a young woman, showing physical signs of being overworked and exhausted. Very good, Ebony. I will report this to my father at once. Brian. Oh, excuse me. I mean, Master. When will I be allowed to put this sad dog out of his misery? That will be unnecessary, Ebony. To have him be broken inside is just what Father wanted. Brian said as a grin appeared on his face. I understand, Master. Hunt down this new enemy and bring him to me alive. As for his companions, if they will not serve our purpose, Eliminate them, along with any surviving villagers who had helped them. This is my father's command. And so it will be done.